Right here, baby. Right, baby. Set, ready, pitch. favorite thing about beat baseball is just being able to participate in a sport that because of my blindness I wouldn't be able to participate in anymore. So this gives us the freedom to be out there on the field, put our vision problems aside, and just do what we love to do. I love baseball, I love the hitting, the running, just the, just the, the being active and just being able to run freely where if though I can't do that in my everyday life, just being able to run and know that I'm fine, and knowing that I'm helping other people win the game is just, you know, you, I really can't get that doing anything else. I had a friend of mine that had this ball with him one time when he came out, and he pulled the pen, he said, check this out. And I said, what's this? He says, it's called a beat baseball. I said, what, blind people play baseball? He said, yeah, yeah, this is how we do it. It's a, a beeping ball, and then he told me about the game, how it's played. Uh, this is a beat baseball. Uh, there's a speaker inside. This is a pin that you could put in that uh, turns it on and off. I will pull out the pin and then you'll hear the beep. And once that ball is in play, game on. game is played by six players in the field and also we play with blindfolds because some players have partial sight but most players don't have much sight at all. Uh, when the batter hits the ball they run to either first or third base. The defense tries to hear this ball while the bases are buzzing. So you have to learn how to filter out the bases that are buzzing and focus in on the ball. If we get the ball before they run to a base, they're out. If they reach the base before we get the ball, it's a run. And the pitcher uh, is actually sighted. He's trying to put the ball where the player's bat can hit it, so he puts the ball in play. The pitcher and the catcher are sighted, and once the ball is put into play, the batter will run to either first or third base, and that's the base you see, that's the blue cone that emits a buzzing sound. And there's the pitcher, the catcher, and the batter all on the same team. So I have the glove, and I place it the location of where the ball should be coming across the batter, because of course each batter doesn't have a level swing, so we adjust it to each batter. I missed my target by a foot and a half inside, and he turned on the ball. He can see. <laughs> Scott's last hit, I went, set, ready, pitch. And he didn't even say pitch. Good hit. My uncle was part of the team. He asked me, we were at a dinner, and he said, hey, you want to pitch? I'm like, all right, I'll give it a shot. Apparently, I did pretty well, and they kept me on. <laughs> You're at 20 feet away, and uh, some of these guys hit the ball pretty freaking hard. And other than that, it's just, it's it's chemistry between you and the batter, right? Because they have to time it right, I have to pitch it right. It's 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 two it's a two-way street, so we've got to be on the same point. And when we are, it looks great. And when we're not, you yeah, feel really bad that you're missing a guy who has no idea how far away that ball is. When I'm missing you, when you're missing, it's me missing you. You're not doing anything wrong. And you just stay in, keep making swings. I don't, I, I know you guys, you like me, you get selfish and you're like, I, I can't hit the ball. Right? Yeah. I'm clearly missing you with really bad pitches. Yeah. So okay. stay in, yeah. keep swinging. All right? All right? Let's go. The players are actually numbered in the field. We count from the left side, five, four, three, two, one. And the spotter, that would be me in most cases, I spot for the team. I'll yell number one or number two, depending on where the ball is hit. So if the ball is hit toward the right field side, I would say one. If it's toward the left field side, I might say five or four. That tells the player in that area that the ball is coming in your direction. They can't see it, obviously, so they've got to listen to the beeping ball and try and find it in the ground before the runner gets to the base. And you've got these buzzing bases and the ball is beeping actually coming to you. And that's where the important piece is. The ball does not beep for the person who's hitting the ball. The ball is actually beeping for the fielders who are going to have to get the ball, pick it up before that person gets to the base. Because I have more vision, it's harder for me to hone in on the one ball, which would figure you wouldn't think having more vision would be a disadvantage for anything. I'm a spotter, which means I'm one of the two-sided people on the team that helps set the defense. 
we're allowed to call one number one time when the ball is hit. Most of these guys are so good that they know where the ball is going and, and its velocity. But the two spotters can help. And again, we implement the defensive strategy on who stands where for each team. We do shifts for left-handed batters. It's, their strategy is very similar to regular baseball. If you're predictable in beat baseball, it's to your detriment. I tend to use inflection in my calls so that they know a well-hit ball in the air has a different inflection than a short 50-footer. I squeak my 50-footers. <laughs> Six would be a shorty. Six. That's kind of like, that's an ordinary everyday call. Go get it and we got to get out of here. It's as ordinary as I can make it. Uh, six! Kind of a yodel. Some guys like it, some guys don't because you're stepping on the sound of the ball. Some of them don't want you to, to do that. Others need it because they're not as experienced and they're counting on that inflection to tell them. Uh, where I get my uh, satisfaction is to see uh, these players come uh, onto the team and watch them grow socially and interact with the players. There you go, Morgan. Come on, Alfonso, pushing. Let's go, Richie. Let's go, Richie. Alfonso, where you go, baby? Yeah. Where you go? Nice, Mom. I mean, Mark. I don't even know. It went, it went um, half side. But it was in the air. Sure. Huh? It was in the air. It was high side. High side, short in the air. Um, it was on his head, though. It's intense. Some of the talent out here, it's hard to believe how good these players can be at finding the ball, picking up the ball, running to a base. This is, this is a joy to be outdoors. It's a joy to be running free without having to have uh, a sighted guide. It's legitimate competition for blind people. Um, we're hitting a pitch ball, which is incredible. I remember the first time I, I hit a live pitch, I'm like, this is freaking awesome. Players say, I wished I'd known about this sooner. I had no idea because and that's how I came to it, was looking for a sport for a visually impaired person. You, there aren't team sports. Socially, once you're blind, a lot of times um, you're kind of an outcast. You don't have a lot of friends. And this is a great way for them to socially network. Well, let's rock. Let's put them out there. Let's rock. Let's rock. Let's rock. When I say Jersey, you say Titan. Jersey! Titan! Jersey! Titan! Jersey! Titan! Hey, Red! Hey, Black! Hey, Red! Hey, Black! We all we got! We all we need! We all we got! We all we need! We all we got! We all we need! Pitch. But it's going to be a swing and a miss, and he strikes out. So that'll do it for the inning. But Philadelphia did exactly what they needed to do. They dropped a three spot. And as we head to the bottom of the fourth, it's Philadelphia 11 and New York 5. Uh, my name is Matt Wallace. I graduated from Temple in 2015 with a degree in broadcast journalism. I've been totally blind since birth. Um, I was offered to, to do this uh, by the Philadelphia Fire. They said they would like someone to come and broadcast their games. Here we go, here's the delivery. Swing and a miss. That is strike four and that is the ball game. And I am blazing for a fire victory as the Philadelphia Fire are 2-0. and I take a lot of pride in that because as a totally blind person, quite frankly, I'm accomplishing something that isn't expected of me. And I'll admit that that's pretty cool. And that's something that I really strive for. Seeing how exciting or how excited the, the players get with it and how they're interacting with the other fielders the other uh, you know, opposing team. Just seeing that these individuals that have a, a visual impairment can actually play the game of baseball. It's great to see and a great feeling to know that I'm helping them enjoy the sport. And I don't care if you're, you're in a wheelchair or, you know, or, or if, you're, if you're deaf or you're blind, you, you want to be uh, in that situation where you're competing. And that doesn't, you know, it, it's not taken away from you just because you have a particular disability. You just have to find new outlets or in adaptive manners to, to kind of engage yourself. And from Spino National Park in Long Island, New York, 
I'm Matt Wallace, broadcasting the Beef Baseball Tournament. Thank you for listening from Cut 4.